most integral part of building advanced AI agents is your knowledge base. Whether you're building AI voice agents, text-based chatbots, or AI tools, poorly created knowledge base will mean inaccurate answers and pretty confused users. Think of it like a stack of playing cards. The knowledge base is sort of the bottom layer, and without one of these cards, everything comes crashing down. In this video, I will share the secrets that I use to improve my client's AI knowledge base responses. This includes structuring your documents, improving queries for better results, and uploading different document types, etc. I'll showcase this on VoiceFlow and AI Chatbot Builder, but this method will work for any knowledge base platform like Vapi.ai for voice callers. So jumping into VoiceFlow, I want to show you one simple trick that can be done with any knowledge base. So this right here is the VoiceFlow platform. If you're not familiar with VoiceFlow, VoiceFlow is a no-code chatbot builder. If you wanna learn more about building chatbots on VoiceFlow, I've got a one and a half hour tutorial, everything to do with building our chatbots, which you can click in the top right and you can watch that video. So if you've used VoiceFlow before, you'll know that one of the most powerful features of VoiceFlow is the fact that you can go ahead and go to the knowledge section and you can go ahead and just upload a bunch of files of information, uh, hundreds of pages, however much information that you need for your assistant. You can go into the building platform of VoiceFlow and all you need to do is use the AI response AI block. And all this does is that it targets the knowledge base and we can ask any question we want to that knowledge base. But unfortunately, this VoiceFlow knowledge base has very little functionality and features. So we can't really get the most out of this knowledge base. I've gone ahead and uploaded this document right here, which is about 200 pages. And this is a book by Alex Hamozzi. So we've got around 103 chunks of information from uploading this one document. So the way that this is currently working is that these chunks are provided somewhat of a sort of relevant score. And so that when we ask the knowledge base a question, it looks at every single one of these chunks and it understands that this chunk relates to something and this chunk relates to something slightly different. And by asking a question, it's going to use uh, a certain amount of these chunks. If I click the settings button at the top here, we can actually decide how many of these chunks we want to use at once. So at the moment, it's set to a default of three. We could increase this all the way to 10. The more chunks we use, the more cost is involved because we're using more information in our prompt every time to the AI model. So if we're doing 10 chunks, it'd be very expensive or more accurate. And if we do three chunks, it'll be less expensive, obviously less accurate. So that is one trick right there that you can use to get a little bit more accuracy but ultimately the difference is gonna be quite negligible. One of the biggest things that you can do, whether you're using VoiceFlow or using Vapi or any AI platform that has a knowledge base, it'll work pretty much exactly the same as this is working, is just structuring your documents better and structuring your documents so the information is relevant as it goes down. As we can see here, these chunks are essentially just taking the information in order. So we can see here that it chunks the first bit of information and then it directly leads onto the next chunk. So these chunks have got no sort of structure to them. It just splits the document up with obviously a certain amount of information in every chunk and then just uses that as the chunks. So if your knowledge base is not sorted properly and your documents have information that is not relevant to each other side by side in this chunk, potentially you could have information about one topic that is directly next to information about a completely different topic. And what this means is when this chunk is pulled into our AI response to answer to the user, it doesn't have as much information as we possibly could have given it than what we have at the moment. So the biggest thing that I encourage you to do is just structure your documents better so that you can get more relevant information going to the user than what most people typically build. Once you've improved the structure of your documents, I'm now gonna take this a step further by customizing how we actually load information into the knowledge base. To do this, I'm gonna be using a platform called VectorShift, which is the sponsor of this video. VectorShift enables us to fully customize our knowledge base in storing and retrieving information fully. This is much more advanced than the VoiceFlow knowledge base and other knowledge bases like the one on Vapid. We can use VectorShift to improve our responses in quite a few different ways. Number one is changing the chunk size and chunk overlap. Chunk size refers to how big each information split is in our knowledge base. So our knowledge base kind of split up our documents and rank the content by relevance because we can't obviously upload the entire document into our prompt. Our knowledge base will split it into many chunks. The bigger our chunk size is, the more likely relevant information is included in our response. Chunk overlap is the number of characters that should overlap between two chunks. This helps provide more context for each chunk. If we cut up random document parts, each chunk might need some clarification. So increasing the chunk overlap will include more information from previous chunks this will just make the knowledge responses more accurate and give the AI more context. So here's how we can do this on the VectorShift platform. So this right here is a VectorShift and you can sort of think of VectorShift as the sort of voice flow, but specifically targeting the knowledge base. So what you're looking at 
on the screen specifically is essentially the build of a knowledge base where we're taking an input from a user we're then searching up information in a knowledge base and we're sending this to the OpenAI large language model to generate a response and then sending that to an output. So whilst quite similar to VoiceFlow, we actually get a lot more control over how the information is being searched. And we can simply connect VectorShift to any platform we'd like using their API call. If you go to the top right of VectorShift, you can see a deploy button, click on chatbot, and you can give it a random name. Just by clicking save, you can go ahead and go to the export function, click on API, choose any of the API functions that they have, and we can simply just make a request to that URL, inputting your API key from the settings, and then inputting a question in the value box right here. We can essentially use this knowledge base from wherever we want. If we wanna do an API call from VoiceFlow, we wanna do a API call from Vapi. So to go ahead and change our chunk overlap, if I go to our knowledge base reader, click on create new knowledge base, click on advanced settings. We can now see that we actually get a lot more functionality than previously on VoiceFlow or pretty much most knowledge base platforms. So one thing that we can do is change the chunk size. So this is the number of sort of information that we include in a single chunk. So we can go all the way up to around 4,000 in one chunk. And so this affects essentially the cost, obviously the more information per chunk, it's gonna affect the cost because you're just putting more information into your larger language model. But the greater the chunk size, the more accurate your responses are going to be. And just below this is the chunk overlap, which like I mentioned previously, is the amount of sort of duplicate information that is gonna be included per chunk to give it more relevance, to give us more accurate answers. So once again, the higher this value is, the more accurate the responses are going to be. Now, the second thing that we can do is actually upload different document types to our knowledge base. Now, typically a knowledge base will enable you to upload Word documents, text files, PDF files, etc. However, you can't upload structured data like Excel sheets or CSV files and expect accurate answers. But with VectorShift, they actually have a CSV query function that enables us to ask a question and have it turned into a formula that searches the database. So if you want to see how to query a CSV file on VectorShift, check out my video in the top right where I did exactly that. Thirdly, some knowledge bases will only query text, skipping graphs, images, and charts that may have been in that document. With advanced querying, we can actually automatically detect and make sense of the page elements, allowing them to be searched as well. And this will also work with documents that the text is actually an image. So it will automatically use an OCR or optical character recognition to extract and search for text. So I recommend you check your knowledge base documents as you may not realize that some of your documents might be scanned PDF files where the text is actually an image and it will actually require this text scanning method. So just jumping back into VectorShift very quickly here, one thing you'll notice when creating the new knowledge base is that there is a file processing option. And in this file processing option, we can select something called Llama Pass. And this is what will enable us to scan those images, graphs, text and do the OCR scanning. And so by turning that on, we're gonna get much more accurate answers. Another thing we can do is enable a hybrid keyword search. So before knowledge base responses, search engines use keywords to find relevant content. So we can essentially use this same method to potentially find relevant parts of a document and provide this to the AI in addition to the chunks. So once again, on VectorShift, this is actually a very easy thing to do. When you're creating your knowledge base, there's a button that says hybrid and you can just toggle that on. This will just enable the sort of old fashioned keyword search uh, and just give you more information to get more accurate answers once again. Last but not least, one of the best things I've found to increase the accuracy is VectorShift's three different querying options. First option is called transform query, which attempts to transform queries into questions that are more likely to get better responses. Some users may provide poorly written questions that the knowledge base struggles to deal with. By transforming our query, we can assist the AI as much as possible. And this is very simple to do on VectorShift. Simply go to your knowledge base reader, click the settings button and just turn on transform query. And now this is gonna use its backend knowledge to go ahead and make that question that the user has inputted much better to be able to send to that knowledge base and get a much better response. The second option is called expand query, which breaks down a question into multiple steps and asks the knowledge base one by one. This helps structure a response for the knowledge base instead of trying to get everything at once. For example, if a user asks a technical question, we can break it down into more straightforward step-by-step -step questions and get a more in-depth answer. Since we can only receive a set amount of information from the knowledge base at once, asking several more minor questions will get all the information required so they then can put together that really formed answer. To do this on vector shift, once again, super simple stuff. We're just clicking the settings button on the knowledge base reader, going down to expand query and just turning it on. Thirdly, we can answer multiple questions. 
So sometimes if we ask a knowledge base several different questions at once, it gets a bit confused. So we can use this to break down multiple questions, asking each question one by one and getting direct responses for each of them. And to do this on vector shift, once again, super simple, just enabling the answer multiple questions button and everything is gonna be happening in the back end, doing it automatically for you to get much more accurate responses. Click the video on the left if you wanna learn how to create AI chatbots from scratch in one hour. And if you wanna learn how to create AI phone callers from scratch in just two hours, click the video on the right.